Hello and welcome to the Crochet Business School podcast. I'm Kelly Thomas, the Crochet Profit Queen, and I'm going to show you how you can make a living from your crochet while avoiding the burnout and being able to make what you want and when you want. Can I make money from my crochet with Pinterest? The short answer, absolutely you can. Pinterest is a massive traffic driver to anything. So Pinterest is a search engine, except it's a search engine that uses images rather than words like Google does. You type in what you're looking for and you'll get images that match your search. Which means when it comes to shopping, it's a great platform because we want to see what we're about to buy. We don't want to read the tagline. We don't want to read the description heading. We want to see it. And so Pinterest is a fabulous place for selling what you want to find, what you want to see. A lot of people who are looking for products that don't come from mass manufacturers use Pinterest because they know they're going to find something that's more unique, something that maybe they're not going to find in the big shopping centers, something that's a bit more off the wall and exclusive. So it's a fantastic platform for people who are looking to shop and not just for physical products, not just for the end thing, but for digital downloads as well, for patterns. They're also looking for blogs. They're looking for videos. They're looking for anything that they, they want to find. People use Pinterest exactly like people use Google. They use it to find things. And it's just that they're using it to find things with images instead of words. But it means that it's a great place for your crochet. It doesn't matter if you're selling what you make, if you're selling crochet patterns, if you're trying to drive uh, traffic to a blog, to a YouTube video, to a course, to an ebook. It doesn't matter. Pinterest will drive that traffic. So I have two different businesses. I have my pattern business, Froggity Frog, and I have my coaching business here at Crochet Business School. I use Pinterest for both, and I get a lot of traffic from both. Pinterest accounts for over 25% of the traffic coming to both my websites. That's both of them. It's my second biggest traffic source after Google. And you know what? If you search Google, pins turn up in the search results. So you get a double piece of the pie. If people aren't finding you on Pinterest, they can find your Pinterest pins on Google. I mean, if that's not worth it, what is? Because pins will actually come quite high in the Google search. It's a win-win. People look through Pinterest for information as well as products. And on your pins, you can choose the link that that pin links to. The key is to make sure that the image of or the video for the pin that you use matches the pin heading and the pin description. Everything has to match up. And then you're gonna make sure that it goes to a relevant link. So the Pinterest bots will do their thing and go and find out if what you're linking to matches what you're posting on Pinterest. And once it gets to know you and it realizes that you're not spamming and you're not doing clickbaity things, it will push your pins up the feed. So it does take time for Pinterest to get to know you. Uh, It takes time for it to go to work, but if you give it a chance, and when I say a chance, I mean you've got to give it a year. It's It just needs that time. 
and you will see your traffic start shooting up. You do have to feed the beast with new pins, but unlike social media, if you post a pin to Pinterest, it's there forever. It can always be searched for. So if your pin matches what someone's searching for, and it's six years old, it's still going to get found. It doesn't go away. It's evergreen. And that is one of the biggest ups upsides to Pinterest, is that your content is always there. It can still be found if people are searching for what you offer. You just got to make sure that you give them a compelling reason to click. You need those all important clicks, otherwise they're not buying from you. Otherwise they're not going to your content and discovering more about you. So take the action that you want them to take. Pinterest is a massive traffic driver and it has a huge user base. Millions upon millions of people around the world use Pinterest. It can help you sell physical products. It now links um, directly with Shopify to create product catalogs. So if you have a crochet store and you have Shopify, get your product catalog linked in Pinterest. You can also use it to send it to your Etsy shop, to your Ravelry shop. You can send it to your blog. You can send it to YouTube. You can pin picture pins. You can pin video pins. There are whole group of strategies you can use to make Pinterest work for you. But whatever you choose to pin on Pinterest, you've got to be consistent and you've got to give people a reason to click. You've got to make sure that your pins, the pictures and videos that you're using are compelling enough to make them want to find out more. You have to give them that reason. So Pinterest absolutely will help you make money from your crochet. But you've got to get your pin images or videos really interesting to stop the scroll, to stand out from the crowd. Your title has to draw them in so they want to read more. And then your description has to compel them to click to go find out more because it's exactly what they're looking for. So you do have to put the work in to make sure this sells, to make sure it works and people click. Just having a nice image isn't enough. You've got to tell them why it's a nice image, what you can do for them, how you are going to solve the problem they have. You have to make sure that they understand that what you have is exactly what they're looking for. And you have to do that in an image. But thankfully, there are tons of Pinterest templates on Canva. So if you go to Canva and you click on their templates, they will have banks of um, Pinterest sized images that you can add your own uh, photos to. You can change the writing and then you can load those up to Pinterest. So it's really easy to create the images you need for Pinterest on Canva. And Canva has a fantastic uh, free plan. So you don't even need the pro one to start off with. Does Pinterest take work? Well, yes. Any strategy that you're going to use for your marketing takes work. It takes time and you have to keep adding content. You have to learn how to use it properly. But if you do put that time and effort in, Pinterest is a fantastic way to drive traffic to the place you want to send it whether it's your shop, whether it's your social media, whether it's your newsletter list, you can send your traffic anywhere you want it to go. Me, personally, I love Pinterest. It's my key marketing strategy for both my businesses. It's the platform I get on with best. It suits me and it drives over 25% of my traffic, which is not an amount to be sniffed at. And right now that's actually on the low side. It's usually a lot higher, but unfortunately I've neglected my Pinterest lately and I need to get it back up and running again. Which is kind of why I'm recording this podcast episode because I've woken up to the fact that I forgot to pin last month and I've now got to make up for it. So Pinterest is on my mind right now. But I'm going to be working on my pins later and getting it going again. 
So it won't be long before Pinterest makes up more than 25%. I think at one point it was 45% of my traffic. So it was almost half. I mean, that's a huge amount. It's, it is really worth it if it's for you. But Pinterest is free, so they, you have nothing to lose by giving it a try. And you might discover it's a platform for you. So as always, if you have any questions, please do come to our Facebook community. The link is in the show notes. And if you have any Pinterest questions, just ask away. But otherwise, thank you for listening today. And I shall see you next time for the next episode. Bye for now.